Hello and welcome to the finals of a Twisted Cube Draft online versus Jimmy Junkles. It's a pretty good hand to keep. I'll begin with uh, Reese. Just gets a little pressure down. Then, it's going to be a while before we do anything of consequence, but on turn three we can start making a little army. Uh huh. So maybe this is a, an EDH player. I know there's a certain button you can press to... What did they do? They, they did nothing there. If you tap all your mana out, there's a button you can just yield all. Never played Commander Online, but I have heard about that. Okay, well, here's our win condition. If we get enough mana, Porphyros and Tempt. Demonic tutor, oh no. So they're they're assembling some kind of Voltron over there. Some combo. And we don't even get to see what it is. Well, I'll just pass here. I don't really want to run out tempt for two or ash cloud uh, not flipped. And there's no pressure, so we can just keep making servos with this with this guy. Green white servos. Yeah, this is very similar to uh, Avia, the legend from Kaladesh. Three to make one one servos, and then five to tap and make a, a big XX construct. Okay. Well, don't make me sacrifice a creature. Each player discards a card. That shouldn't be too bad. I don't... Well... <laughs> what don't I want? March of Souls? March of Souls actually could be pretty cool with Porphyros. I'm going to discard Ashcloud Phoenix, maybe? Wow, I really don't know. All right, let's get rid of March of Souls. I'm going to make a little token. So we can pressure Liliana somewhat. I really do want to get Porphyros into play. It, it can actually kill Liliana just like Ashcloud can next turn. I don't imagine them getting rid of it. Let's just kill Liliana. Ooh, Genesis. So, they can return Genesis to their hand. <laughs> That's kind of a combo, right? If they wanted to use up their turn. Okay, so I imagine they'll have us discard again. We can kind of think about what we want to discard. Maybe at this point Ashcloud Phoenix, because Mog War Marshal just represents more damage. They could have us sacrifice our Elf Warrior. Really tough to say here. Each player discards a card. Yeah, I guess at this point I'm more interested in getting rid of the War Marshal, although War Marshal is a guaranteed kill for Liliana. This turn. So maybe we discard Ashcloud Phoenix, as weird as that looks. Yeah. Because Tempt with Vengeance is going to have higher value later. So we redirect this first bit to Liliana and then the next bit to Liliana as well. So now we don't have to worry about our hand. Man, that was rough. So they can get back Serene Steward, I guess. This is an Obzon good stuff deck. So they're playing the life gain game too, but we haven't seen any payoff there yet. They might be able to play out Serene Steward this turn. No, they're not going to spend that much mana.
and yeah, they can return Genesis itself, right? Yeah, okay. Combos with itself. Ooh, Kessig Cage Breakers. You know, hopefully we can ignore most of this, and Gideon Jura is going to be pretty good if we get that going. I don't want to pay for the thing. Huh. But maybe I do want to flame slash this uh, Cage Breakers. Because when it attacks, they're going to get a bunch of wolves all of a sudden. And that doesn't sound too appealing to me. They could always return it, but that's kind of getting it two turns later. I would rather get Gideon Jura out before that nonsense. <clears throat> and it really isn't much much good to to play Tempt before it does much damage. I mean, it does what, like six damage here? It gets a few creatures out. And every mana we wait for does two more damage, so it's... This combo is just such a good fireball. There is a point when you don't need to kill off Porphyros, where the attackers you'll have afterwards are good enough. Okay, what's it gonna be? We don't have any of our devotion to red left, Mogwar Marshal, Ashcloud Phoenix, so Porphyros coming alive is a long way away. Oh, we should be able to take down Garuk here. Yeah, it's making a beast, that's wise. If we tempt, we could we could sort of do four to them and two to Garuk. Or maybe just two with uh, the Wayfarer. I like that here, because it does mean we can start getting lands. So yes, redirect. Don't have to worry about that guy. And we can double up on a 3-3 attacking us to take it down if we'd like. By activating Porphyros once. Yeah, they're getting back the Cage Breakers. I guess that, you know, is something they want to get in play eventually. Genesis always struck me as a bit slow. It doesn't really... I mean, it's fine to have as a late-game inevitability card, and maybe this cube is low power enough for this effect to be good. I mean, certainly they're in the finals, and that is another good way to get mana. Yeah, the trouble with them attacking here is I'm really not too concerned about it, and we might get a whole lot more damage to them if we if we don't block. The other reason being it's another creature in their graveyard, which is also not great for us. Okay, let's let's start doing this. We get we get a land. They're sitting on seven lands, so we can do this for a while. We get any land, is that how this works? Wow, this guy's better than I than I really thought at first. Let's get care keep. Because we can not oh yeah, yeah, we can actually Rakdos Signet and make a make a dude. So that's some inevitability for you. Getting green is another option there, but you know, this this'll be fine. <laughs> fine like this. Cool. I bet this will be good enough to just win in short order. Fourteen. We're looking at like fourteen damage between this turn and next turn, if uh, if all goes well. And then we might even have enough creatures to attack past them and finish them off. So if we don't win next turn, 
were almost certainly winning the turn after that. Once again, you know, I could actually block with the, the Cobalt here. I don't mind doing that. It's not going to be that likely to block more than that. Ooh, Goblin Bombardment. So, yeah, a bit, a bit tricky. A bit tricky playing this, but I do want to tempt with Vengeance here. If they accept our offer, then they're just dead on the spot. Right, I'm counting that right, that's a uh, five. So if they let us have 10 things, that's 20 damage. So they go pretty low this way. Yeah, X is five, that's what we want. And they have haste too, I, I pretty much forgot about that. So yeah, we do win this turn. Card's good. Depending on what card they have in their hand, do we know what they have in their hand? They didn't return something else with Genesis. I don't think we're dead on the crackback because they've got two creatures there. That's seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. That's thirteen. Yeah, we probably just attack out here and win. You know what? We should have we should have activated Weathered Wayfair. It's not a big deal though. So if they have an answer for one creature, this is still lethal. I think this is a fine attack. Or two creatures, it's still lethal. I think this is a fine attack. Seeing as we're not really dead. <clears throat> if they attack us back. Yep, yeah, so that's it. Man, this deck is powerful. It, it has, like, a lot of different pieces, a lot of moving pieces, but... A lot of them work well together, and there are some pieces of early interaction. You know, threats that sort of distract the opponent. They kind of might have used some card disadvantage there to get rid of Reese, where we didn't really need it to win, even though it looks kind of scary. Uh, what did they have? It's a bunch of 3-3s. Three I think this is fine, so we'll we'll submit like this and have at them. They did they did have a bunch of planeswalkers, so that that could be something to to keep an eye on. But anyway, we'll know more after this next game if it does go to game three. It's more easy to remember what they have when what they have beats you. Alright, yeah, this this hand's fine. I guess I just snap kept it. It's got goblins, it's got their bombardment. We draw into Krenko. So it looks like it's going to be Rakdos Signet. Because if we can play Krenko on three, Mog War Marshal is a fine follow-up. Yeah, that doesn't get us there. Blah. In fact, it makes me want to play Goblin War Marshal just to, to deal with Grim Flare. Well, hopefully they don't find their, their Delirium, and even if they do, I think we can probably race that if they have no way to interact with Krenko. So best case is we draw untapped land next turn and try to get Krenko out there. Uh, worst case, they get Delirium <laughs> with Grim Flare and it proceeds to kill us. Because that is a, a large chunk of life every turn if Grim Flare gets going. And with Trample, our tiny blockers are embarrassing against it. Looking two turns ahead, this game might come down to who is on the play. Because if we could get Krenko out a turn earlier, like the turn before they hit us with Grim Flare, that makes a huge difference. This card's pretty 
crazy. Look at the top three. So it's not unreasonable to get um, delirium off the first hit. It's not easy. Artifact creatures help. Oh, that helps too. Oh no. The nice part about this is they don't know what they're they're tutoring for. They don't know whether they're going to have to deal with a uh, what is it? A legendary indestructible enchantment, or Krenko, or something else. You know, big sorcery. Yeah, that is funny. So we have no idea what they got. They're up to five cards. This thing, of course, hits us. They're looking at their our top three. No, their top three. Yeah, that's how that works. That's how that works, and they put nothing. They just put them all on the top. They liked everything. Oh, we kind of got it, though. We've got Krinko here. And it's a bit greedy to play this, but I can't see not playing it. Like, Unless they just have the removal this turn, which they might. You know, it's not that bad for us. Plus, next turn we'll be making three goblins, and then we'll have mana left over. So that gets out of hand really quickly, because then it's then it's six, then it's twelve, then crazy. Okay, so they put another land in there. They're still only at two types. And then they still like the top two. I guess last turn they liked the top three, so it makes sense they only like the top two now. Brain Maggot, oh no. Well, that, that really doesn't affect us much because we have so many different answers to it. They might take Stinger here because then it gets a lot more, well, I don't know, Bombardment does just as well against Brain Maggot. And if they don't take one of these two, well, if they don't take the Stinger, we can just get the, the War Marshal. And they took the Bombardment. That's fine. We'll just get it back immediately. That's the plan, anyway. Uh, Raging Ravine, do we need to play that? I don't think so. Let's lead with War Marshal. <coughs> Make a token. Get our stinger out here. <clears throat> we could even attack the Grim Flayer, but then they draw two cards. So I don't love that. Oh shoot, the uh, stinger. Yeah, I thought the stinger would be killing that right away, but th this is fine too. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and activate Krenko now because if we wait until their turn, they might have mana up to kill some number of goblins. Well, it's hard to think of a way they could kill one, but not all of them. But still. So I'm s we're still not out of the woods yet. They have been topping a lot of cards, which means they're relevant. They're not still digging for answers with Grim Flare. All right, what do we got here? I imagine they'll still come in with Grim Flare, and I imagine we'll block with the War Marshal. The trouble is, if that thing gets big, that's also a big threat to us. And we might not want to pay for this next turn anyway. So they get to draw two, they get to reorder the top. 
And that is it for for our half of the turn. All they need is some kind of black, white, or green wrath, I guess. It is the twisted color pie cube, so maybe green has a wrath in there. I know it has a glorious anthem type effect. For all its tokens. Skin render, no, not our Krenko. He did a lot. To be fair, he, he did a lot. He made three goblins. I guess it did about as much as the skin render. Oh man, well... That's something, I guess. We've got Raging Ravine. Maybe we discard Raging Ravine to try to search for something. <clears throat> because Tempt with Vengeance will still be good, I, I imagine. Well, let's... Mm, I don't know. Let's... Let's kill the Brain Maggot while we can. And discard the Raging Ravine. I think that's fair. Now we have another good thing to discard next turn with the uh, Weathered Wayfarer. Our big hope now is that they attack with Skin Render. We kill it off and they they don't find any more creatures, but that's pretty hard to do without Genesis, or with Genesis. Okay, they did not get back Brain Maggot. They're not too scared of what we have. Once we do get a lot of tokens and Goblin Bombardment, we can kill all creatures that they try to attach the Skull Clamp to. That's kind of the dream. They have six lands, so Weathered Wayfarer will, might actually do good work if we get that into play. We could even discard, well, I don't know what we'd discard. You don't have to discard anything, I guess. Well, I, I don't want this thing hitting Nahiri. So we could block with one or two. I like blocking with two. Means they'll have to use some mana if they want to get anything else done, but they have a ton of cards. Oh no, so we do need to find something, something good. The Orcish Artillery is not very good. So I guess we'll discard that. Plains is pretty good. What does this thing do? does one, does one damage. So that's, that's fine, I suppose. That thing has flying, so we'll have to try to kill that. This thing doesn't have haste, but I'll leave up uh, white mana just in case. And we could get two little dudes, but we probably don't need that yet. Okay, this is fine. Yeah, they might Genesis, and if they do, they could get back Skin Render. That would be annoying. Or Brain Maggot, but Brain Maggot doesn't do anything here. Okay, so they, they didn't get anything back. Yeah, Brain Maggot's just so easy to kill with the Bombardment. Now we have to choose what we're going to get with Nahiri Ultimate if we want to. Krenko's gone. Wait, how does this read? Search your library. So it has to be from your library. Uh, so Krenko is not an option. Porphyros, you know, I'm pretty sure Porphyros is an option. 
One, two, I'm pretty sure it is. It is a creature card. You do put it on the battlefield. And then we could tempt with vengeance for quite a lot. And it's sort of three damage for each one we make. So six, or uh, five, 10, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Yeah, that should be enough next turn if, if they don't mess us up too much. Okay, so we don't want Nahiri to be hit here, so we can try to prevent that with a little bit of careful planning. A little bit of goblin bombardment. And they can sacrifice it uh, to gain some life. Yeah, I guess that kind of sucks for us too. But it's only three life. It's only three life. We can deal with that. Then they could equip Skull Clamp to something else. That's not a big deal either. Faith's Fetters. Ooh, that's tough. That's tough and rough, and I don't like it. We can't do anything about that. So, oh well. <laughs> And we can't do anything about that either. Okay. Yeah, that's funny. They were just going to use it anyway. Well, we do get to use Weathered Wayfarer to get whatever we want. And what do we want? I'm pretty sure we want Care Keep. because we have all our mana fixed, and Needle Spires doesn't really do that much here. Right, so they know what's coming. I'm just going to use this. We get to make a Cobalt on top of everything else. Man, Nahiri can't activate its abilities, so no more fun for Nahiri. And we don't really have a way to deal with that that's not on our sideboard. So the one way to deal with it is Mangara of Corindor. Oh no, they're gonna get back Windborn Muse. So we really need uh, Porphyrus to win this. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of a lock. Okay, they're not getting it back. The Genesis Windborn Muse type thing doesn't matter how many times we kill it. Archangel of Thune. Also good. Also pretty good. Yeah, they're not going to attack into Porcelain Legionnaire here. That doesn't make too much sense. But we will have a lot of vengeance next turn. There's going to be a whole lot of vengeance. So what do I want to do here? Would I rather kill Fauna Shaman or do one damage to them? Uh, it's, it's not too hard, I guess. Ooh, Hall of Triumph. Well, all our tokens will be red. Uh, can we use Weathered Wayfarer? If we can, we might as well. So there at seven, we're at six. Yeah, let's use that. This time, Arid Mesa, I mean, I really do like the effect of fetching, but it might come down to life here, and I'd rather be at uh, 13 than 12. So I will be a little more conservative and play planes, or get planes, rather. <clears throat> so we could get six dudes with tempt and then the extra ones will be bigger next turn I guess that's fine these guys are red so that works with halls alright let's do it let's do it for the max 
a lot less exciting without doubling season or or whatever else. No, please, be my guest. Get some tokens over there. No, they've decided better of it. But what we can do is kill this guy before it really gets going. <clears throat> And I don't mind it just attacking with everything here because they're not going to gain any life off this. They don't have mana to sacrifice Archangel of Thune. Uh, so yeah, what we do here is sacrifice the guy that was going to get hit by Archangel of Thune. Sacrifice this thing because it doesn't do anything. And sacrifice one more. Now, they can always get it back, but that's still a lot of mana. Leaving back the Legionnaire because I don't really want them to trade Ailey off. And it does block Ailey pretty well. Oh, that was like not the best attempt with Vengeance ever after some of the previous ones this match. We're still looking to draw Ooh, your skin render. So skin render. I'm not even sure what they kill here. Maybe the Legionnaire to get some damage in, maybe the Wayfarer to just stop us from tutoring every turn. But we're kinda of done that, since they only have seven lands in play, same as us. Yeah, they're getting rid of this. So instead of letting that happen. Oh, that's tough. I think we send the damage at Ailey. Because... Why not? <laughs> because that means when they go to equip Skin Render, we have at least some option to redirect it. Yeah, they're coming in here at us, and let's kill it before they finish. The other option is this is not a May. They have to draw two cards. So we can let them equip to their heart's content and just keep killing the thing after it gets skull clamp. And we only have to do that four or five times before it kills them. Oh wow, Gideon Jura. I like that. So we'll have a little bit left over. I think that'll be enough left over for a Hall of Triumph. So that's Gideon mana. And it also leaves a Kobold, Kobold mana. So what do we want to do? Well, I think we plus. That much is uh, straightforward. And then, then we can cast this on red. So I'm trying to think if, if red is correct here. It really should be. Most of our things in play are red, and care keep is red. Uh, yeah, no attacks. So yeah, my current plan is actually to not kill the thing they target with Skull Clamp, but the thing that Skull Clamp is attached to. And their plan... Yeah, they're still not getting back Windborne Muse, so they're really not afraid of us winning by damage, or maybe they just have something better to do. Ooh, Beast Within. <laughs> That's not the worst. I mean, we got a beast out of the deal. No way to really prevent that. Too bad it's not a red beast for our halls.
Okay. Yeah, no real way to unlock our Nahiri. If we had another Nahiri, we could use that Nahiri to unlock the first one. But that would probably break some rules. Okay. Dryad Militant. Have I been remembering to use this thing? I think I have. These turns have just been pretty long, so it's hard to keep track of it completely. All right, they're skull clamping the skin render. Fine, fine. <clears throat> Again, they have access to, to plenty of mana and so forth. So I will just kill whatever I can here. Wow, March of Souls. So <clears throat> I'm gonna sit on that one. That one's a little that one's a little weird here. It doesn't really do much here. But when Porphos comes out, it could do a lot more. And we'll just keep making uh, kobolds. So if they get Archangel of Thune going, their souls are also going to be much bigger than ours. And they're stuck at seven, seven mana unless they want to let us have access to Weathered Wayfair. Which means we should also probably stay at, at seven lands. Okay, so they they do return that. They're trying to prison us out, as it were. Yeah, here it is. And this is also game two, if I'm not mistaken. We can check that. Yeah, and we're up a game. So <laughs> if they're the prison-style deck, and they're getting behind on time, that doesn't sound extremely good for them. Doubling season. There we go. Let's do it to it. So now when we cast March of Souls, things get really ridiculous. You know, I think I'm going to do this now in case they can respond to the activation by killing Doubling Season. So this way we at least, we're sure we get Kobolds. As many Kobolds as possible. Yeah, and even if we're not... So yeah, they're, now they're going after Archangel of Thune. Pretty sure we win, even if... Even if uh, some weird stuff happens. We've got a ton of value out of this. In fact, we might be making 20 souls next turn. 10, yeah, Whip of Erebos. Uh, they kind of have to attack here. If they don't attack, they're pretty dead. Let's see. <clears throat> do we want to kill this thing? I think we do. They'll go up to 22. They go up to 22. There's, there's no other trigger they can have. I want to make sure they're actually dead next turn. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. <clears throat> 10, 11. So we'll get 22 souls, and they will get 3 souls. Oh yeah, they're, they're super dead, right? Yeah, I think they're super dead. <laughs> this is a... Uh, yeah, th this is how it's supposed to be. I mean, they're, tap they're completely tapped out, so that's what makes this a little easier. And this is about to be nuts. Oh, that's also insane. Oh, no. Oh, no. What do we do? We could <laughs> make a thousand dragons. The problem is, all those dragons have to pay a million to attack, so that's not really as fun as it, as it ought to be. I hate how this thing works. All right, so this thing. Uh, 
one damage to you. March of Souls. <laughs> Please work. All right, so they get to draw two. <laughs> We're just going to sacrifice all these spirits. What is this art? It's like a little Valkyrie. I hope they're dead, because... This doesn't even look like a white token, right? Like that border. I hope I counted right. That'd be embarrassing. Yeah, so we've got 14 tokens, and they're at... 12. Well, as I'm saying that, it's updating, but we're sort of two spirits more than we need. And they're making us do it. Oh, wait. Ugh. Try not to kill too many of our own spirits. Because we don't have that many to spare. And go. Well, thanks for watching. It's too bad we couldn't use Descent of Dragons or Assemble the Legion in this tournament, but we did some pretty crazy stuff, and I'm a huge fan of what just happened there. So, <laughs> so that's about the farewell. This, this cube goes down tomorrow, but we'll always remember it fondly. Thanks for watching, and good luck in your drafts.